Hi, my name is Natalie, and this is Natalie Lawyer Chick. I'll be discussing popular topics through a legal lens. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. So they had a lot of concerns that the surrounding people were exasperating the issues that she was having. And to be clear, these issues were substance abuse issues, allegedly, and mental health issues, allegedly. They said she was paranoid. She thought that people were out to get her. She couldn't manage her own finances. These were the different allegations that were made against Britney. Now, we have to also consider the fact that she was also um, evaluated by mental health professionals, and the mental health professionals must have found something that they believed in their own professional opinion um, did support the fact that she was having like mental health issues and addictions issues that were interfering with her ability to be able to take care of herself. So let's talk about what a conservatorship is. So as you guys know, Brittany was um, held under what's called a 5150 hold. And that was the first uh, step towards the conservatorship. She was she was held because they said that she was a person that was a danger to herself or to others. And so she was held in a psychiatric hospital. Her father, Jamie Spears, moved under what's called 5350. He filed an application for that. So basically what they were saying is that for reasons of dementia, which is not really what was applicable here, I don't believe, she was unable to um, make informed decisions about her medical treatment. And so they needed to be appointed as conservators. So here's what the statute says about it. A conservator of the person, of the estate, or of the person and the estate, and here is the person and the estate because it's both Brittany and her business, may be appointed for a person who is gravely disabled as a result of a mental health disorder or impairment by chronic alcoholism. That means that the court had to have made a determination that Britney Spears was gravely disabled as a result of mental health disorder or an impairment by chronic alcoholism. So a gravely disabled person is defined like this. Gravely disabled means either of the following. A condition in which a person as a result of a mental health disorder is unable to provide for his or her basic personal needs for food, clothing, or shelter so that is what they found back in 2008, temporarily, that Britney Spears, because of either chronic alcoholism or some severe mental health disorder, was unable to provide for her basic needs of food, shelter, clothing, right? She was unable to provide for her basic needs. So a person is not gravely disabled if that person can survive safely without involuntary detention with the help of responsible family, friends, and others who are both willing and able to help provide for the person's basic personal needs of food, clothing, or shelter. So if some, if some of her family had intervened in this point and said, you know what, we're willing to help to intervene to help Brittany on a voluntary basis, right? Um, and so she's not gravely disabled anymore. So in March of 2009, she goes on the Circus Worldwide Tour. That would go on to gross $131.8 million. Girl was making money. She was making money hand over fist. And remember what the conservatorship says, okay? Black letter law of the conservatorship is a person is not gravely disabled if that person can survive safely without involuntary detention with the help of responsible family, friends, and others who are both willing and able to help provide for the person's basic personal needs of food, clothing, or shelter. So if some if some of her family had intervened in this point and said, you know what, we're willing to help to intervene to help Brittany on a voluntary basis, right? Um, and so she's not gravely disabled anymore, right? Um, also, she's not gravely disabled if she can, you know, help with her own. Um, so here, earning this much money able to work on this tour i fail to see at this point how she can no longer provide her basic personal needs it doesn't say that you need to maintain millionaire status it doesn't say you need to be a titan of industry it doesn't say that you need to be a worldwide pop star that you just need to maintain your basic human needs here she is managing to be a worldwide pop star and she has 
family member. She has a brother. She has a sister. She has a mother. She has a father. She has an ex. We'll get to him because he recently released a statement. All of these people saying that, you know, they are there for her. They love her. They support her. Why it has to happen within a conservatorship is like beyond me at this point in time. But either way, while all of this is happening, she's still under conserv conservatorship. So in 2011, um, she releases the album Femme Fatale, Justice for Femme Fatale. This released at number one, but this is not like one of her top rated albums. But that song on it, what was it? Um, Till the World Ends, which only peaked at number three. It wasn't like the lead single, but I love that song. And I had a remix with Nicki Minaj on it and Kesha. And it was just so 2011. And I used to get it at the gym to that song. I absolutely loved it that song loved it she went number one with that and so then she became the female with the third most number one albums of all time only falling behind mariah carey and janet jackson so at a very young age here she is legendary status okay but still under a conservatorship so in may of 2012 she appeared as a guest judge on x factor she also released that year a single called scream and shout with will i am that also did really really well that was another gym banger yes it was that edm music that she put out that was good for the gym they get that on peloton too a lot i really like that in 2013 she released an album called britney jean which the lead single on that was work b Really love that one. That one goes up in the club. Listen, can you tell that I like Britney Spears' music? I like her music a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm pretty much a music. I'm very picky when it comes to music. But I think that she makes top pop music, you know? Of pop music, she makes some of the best. So in 2013, we begin what's called the Vegas Residency, okay? This is a massive move in Britney's career. I have some criticisms, right, as far as, you know, building a legendary long-term career is concerned in my opinion as someone who likes music a lot i really think that things like um vegas residencies like those are for people like elvis when he was trying to make a comeback you know he did a vegas residency celine dion when she was like kind of like winding down her career she did a vegas residency whitney houston would have been great for a vegas residency you know like you're an older singer maybe you're in your 40s your 50s you know you're in the twilight of your career or you're looking to reintroduce yourself to people and you're gonna do a vegas residency but for someone who in my opinion at and at this point she's in her uh what uh early 30s late 20s in 2013 she still had a couple of really really good albums in her and when you do a vegas residency you signal to the public that basically you're done right and i don't think that that's a good move for career longevity but it's a great move if your number one concern is making money and you have to remember there's someone else at this point in time that is now in control of her career so they're in control of her career it's her father and mr wallet and they basically you know have her do this tour in my opinion they had her do this tour and or they had her do this residency in my opinion i don't know for sure but that's just what i think and um she performs in that residency in vegas from 2013 until 2015. it's called the peace of me residency and it got extended an additional two years it was doing so well so it actually ended up ending in 2017. She also, sometime around that time, released a single with uh, Iggy Azalea, not my favorite artist. And in 2014, um, this is kind of when we got a peek inside the cracks, or not we, but this is kind of when some cracks in the foundation of this conservatorship all the way back in 2014 are starting to show. So she had an attorney that was appointed to her that she didn't even pick her attorney. Um, and he said that she had a grocery list of demands. Now, as an attorney and advocate for my client, if I have a client that has demands and I'm filing this with the court because and I want them to, to be taken seriously, I'm not gonna put my client has a grocery list of demands. Other attorneys know that's kind of like lawyers speak for my client is making me file this, but don't take it too seriously. Grocery list of demands sounds like it's inordinate, like it's too many demands, like they're unreasonable demands. No. My client would like some concessions made. My client is uncomfortable with the direction of the conservatorship. Apparently, Brittany doesn't appear at any of these hearings. Like she is, according to her later, embarrassed, doesn't want, you know, uh, basically it's very stressful to her 
So she doesn't appear for a lot of these court hearings. But in this filing that Mr. Um, Ingham made, he said that some of the things in particular that she wanted was for the court to test her father for alcohol because he was like now having access to her finances, being in control of her finances and also um, in control of her personal life. And like some of the things she was complaining about was that like she wanted to change the color of her cabinets and her dad was like saying she couldn't change the color of her cabinets because it was too expensive. And now remember this woman is making millions of dollars, right? Millions of dollars. And uh, Jamie Spears did have to submit to one alcohol test and it was a random alcohol test and I think it, it came back negative, but then he refused to do any further. And then the court basically said he didn't have to do any more. And according to the um, court said, and who is she to be demanding that of anybody? Now you guys have to remember, she's doing this tour. She's getting drug tested on this tour. It's a dry tour, which means that no one that is there can have alcohol or drugs on the tour. She is getting, um, her medication is monitored at, you know, her receiving her medication. I keep saying tour, but I mean residency. During this piece of me residency, it's a dry residency. She's being drug tested. She is being told that she has to take her medication, but the father who was supposed to be overseeing her finances and her personal life and all of her personal decisions is like bucking at having to have an alcohol test when he has a history of alcoholism. And Brittany was making specific allegations that her father was drinking during this time and it concerned her. If someone has the salience to express that I'm concerned that my conservator may not be fit to be over me, you should take those concerns seriously. And who is she to be demanding that of anybody just seems like a very flippant response to a very serious concern and really actually did concern me. So um, in 2018, Brittany goes on tour in what's called the Peace of Me Tour. And that tour grows $54.3 million. So again, this woman is, she's touring, she's rehearsing, she's singing, she's dancing. Apparently, according to her, she was coming up with her own choreography, but yet she's not allowed to have control over very intimate details of her life. So in October of 2018, Britney announces that she's gonna be doing what's called Britney Domination um, at Park at MGM in Las Vegas, which would be a new Las Vegas residency because again, that was very lucrative the last time. They were gonna give her $507,000 per show, per show, which would have made her the highest paid act on the Vegas Strip. But in January of 2019, this is canceled and never goes forward. And the official announcement to the public was that Britney was going to go on a hiatus because Jamie is sick and she loves her daddy and she wants to be there for her father. And, you know, he she can't um, perform while her father is not well. A court, apparently, they said that he had a near fatal colon rupture. So it does sound very serious. However, in March of 2019, Andrew Wallet, the attorney who had been um, appointed over the assets, the financial side of Britney's conservatorship, he resigns. And it seems to like shake the ground and come out of nowhere. He asked to resign effective immediately and to hurry up and appoint someone. At that point in time, he had been on the conservatorship for 11 years. That's a really, really long time. Guys, 11 years is a long time for a conservatorship for someone in their 30s. That is a long time. So that means it started when she was like 26, 27, 27, 28, something like that. 11 years of conservatorship. And that same month, March of 2019, Brittany enters into a psychiatric facility in March of 2019. And this raises some concern because in April of 2019, well, let me just back this up. This raises some concern. Around like March um, and then after she got out in April and you know before that Britney Spears had been posting some what seemed to be to fans cryptic message on her Instagram page and exhibiting some types of strange behavior which led to people to be concerned for her you know well-being especially as seeing as how she had been under this conservatorship 
for 11 years. So they were getting concerned, like, what's going on here, you know, based on her behavior on Instagram. And there was a podcast called Britney's Gram that, you know, grew out of that concern. And that podcast in April 2019 released a recording from someone that says that they were previously on Britney's legal team that alleged that Jamie Spears canceled Britney's upcoming residency with um, MGM. And because Br Britney refused to take her medication, he was holding her in a mental health facility against her will. And this part is like, you know, just so you guys understand, a mental health facility under the laws that are currently in place right now, in order to commit someone to a mental health facility, there does have to be an independent review by a doctor finding that the person needs to be committed. But I know it's gonna be harder for a pe person that's under a conservatorship to, you know, listen to their demands and commands because basically they're not even deemed to be able to make their own uh, medical decisions, right? And he also said that the reason that Jamie was holding her there was because she had violated the no driving rule that was in her conservatorship. And um, they also alleged that her conservatorship should have ended in 2009. And out of that, the Free Britney hashtag Free Britney movement meme is born. She left the facility in April of 2019 and um, her visitation with her son around that time, sons around that time was around 30% of the time she was allowed to have visitation with her sons. Uh, in August of 2019, some type of physical altercation happened between Jamie Spears and Britney Spears' two sons. Um, and this caused Kevin Federline to request a restraining order against Jamie Spears to keep him away from his sons. Um, the ones that he had with Britney and the other ones he has from other, other relationships. And that was granted. So there's currently a restraining order between Jamie and his grandsons and he's not allowed to see them. That was August of 2019. I don't know, that could have expired since then, but there definitely was in August of 2019. In September of 2019, Jamie Spears was temporar temporarily replaced as the conservator citing health issues. And Jody Montgomery was appointed as the temporary conservator. And they didn't remove Jamie altogether, but, you know, Jody Montgomery was extended through September of 2021 uh, to be this temporary conservator. So in August of 2020, Britney's attorney, Sam Ingham, filed a petition opposing the reinstatement of Britney's dad, Jamie Spears. At this point, no one has filed to end the conservatorship altogether. So without a motion from some party to even end the conservatorship, the court really can't act. But I'll get to that. You know, that's kind of problematic in and of itself. So November 2020, Judge Penny, the judge over the case, denied the request, but did say that Jamie had to split the financial duties with this company called Bessemer Trust. And Brittany took issue with that because she didn't even get to pick Bessemer Trust. They were just put there to look over her finances, right? She had no input in Bessemer Trust. And then in February, 2021, a documentary was released on FX uh, that was produced by the New York Times called Framing Britney. And this really brought the whole Free Britney hashtag to national attention. It also put scrutiny on the fact that, you know, a lot of Britney Spears mental health issues appear to trace back to the time where the media essentially turned on her and decided to demonize her after her interaction with um, Justin Timberlake. And they decided to, uh, you know, hound her and, you know, drive her, you know, to where she was, where she was committed to a hospital. And they thought that it had a lot to do with it. That's kind of like what the message was that they got across. So I thought that that was an interesting point. And then in March of 2021, Brittany formally requested that Montgomery be made the conservator for her personal affairs. A lot of legal wrangling went back and forth, but then um, Brittany finally had a hearing scheduled in which she would be able to address the court. So she has not spoken to the court in years, right? While this entire thing is going on. And the things that she expressed were very, very like painful to listen to. But before we get to that, I just want to talk about the financial aspect of this conservatorship 
because someone has definitely people have definitely benefited from this mega star being under this conservatorship she has paid for the conservatorship financially everything has come out of her pockets the way that the conservatorship law works is that the estate of the person or the person themselves pays the conservators legal fees they pay for everything court costs everything even though this is supposed to be protecting them in their personal and financial interests it also drains the money of the conservatee now one would say on the on the flip side of that that you know by preserving her money because her money was allegedly being depleted when she was under the management of sam lutfi and um the influence of adnan galib that you know th there's a trade-off here that yes she is paying for these things but what she's making back in like multi-million dollars is insurmountable basically it's 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 uncalculable she's making millions and millions of dollars but just you know out of her net worth of 60 million dollars so her dad has received direct payments as conservator of five to seven and a half million dollars since 2008 some of those are paid out in monthly increments um her dad's percentage from the piece of me las vegas residency was 1.5 percent of gross ticket sales which is $2.1 million that he earned from 2013 to 2017. And also her dad for the Femme Fatale tour got 2.95%, that was in 2011. And so he got a commission um, of ticket sales and merchandising of $500,000. As far as the lawyers are concerned for Samuel Ingham, who is her attorney who's appointed to her, again, again she didn't pick this attorney, but from 2016 to 2018, um, he has received $332,000. Her dad's attorney, remember she has to pay for her dad's attorney as conservator. She paid them $170,000 in 2018 alone. Um, that was the law firm of Freeman, Freeman and Smiley. There's nothing in any of these stat in the statute that I've read or any of the case law that says that it's the conservator's job to grow the assets of the conservatee or that it's the conservator's job to make sure that the conservatee uh, becomes super hyper wealthy. Britney Spears has, if, she, if Britney Spears were to live a simple life in a simple house, and I don't even mean like, a, like say she kept her same house, right? And um, all she did was buy groceries and clothes for the rest of her life. And say, you know, she had like one other child or two other children she would have absolutely you know all the money that she would ever need if she were to never perform again just from royalties alone if we're just talking low end 60 million is the low end of the estimate of how much her net worth is right since when did a conservatorship become something that's supposed to grow the assets of the person and make them into this multi-millionaire money-making machine that's basically what they've turned Britney into. They've turned her into a money-making machine and that's not what a conservatorship is supposed to be. It may be that she loses every single cent of her money if she's taken off of the conservatorship. That is a risk that is out there. But it's also a risk that they permanently damage her mental health by holding her in this situation where she's performing for them acting for them, bringing them money, and then they are profiting off of her, but then she doesn't get to make any decisions about the money that she makes or the life that she lives. Britney Spears appeared at a hearing before the judge. It was her first time ever appearing in court uh, since this conservatorship was put back in place. And at that hearing, she expressed that she was not allowed to take out her IUD and she wanted to have a baby with her boyfriend, that she wasn't allowed to go on a ride in the car with her boyfriend, um, that basically she had no control over her day-to-day -day life and that she had lost a lot of her privacy, that she didn't agree with the treatment plan, that she had been placed on lithium, that was a very heavy drug. She expressed that she didn't trust her doctors and her treatment team. She also expressed that she wanted to do therapy in her home. And if not do therapy, she would prefer not to do it at all because she says that she is a Christian and she would prefer to go that route instead of going the way of uh, traditional uh, therapy, which again, in my opinion, that's her right if that's what she wants to do. Even if I may not agree with that, that is her right. Um, and that basically her life has been totally restricted, even though she is responsible for choreographing these dance routines and planning all of these shows and singing all of these songs. She gets no control over her personal life and she 
is depressed by it. The control he had over someone as powerful as me, as he loved the control to hurt his own daughter 100,000%, he loved it. I packed my bags and went to that place. I worked seven days a week, no days off, which in California, the only similar thing to this is called Making anyone work, work against their will, taking all their possessions away, credit card, cash, phone, passport card, and placing them in a home where they they work with the people who live with them. They all, they all lived in the house with me, the nurses, the 24-7 security. Um, there, there was one chef that came there and cooked for me um, daily on the, during the weekdays. They watched me changed every day naked, morning, noon, and night. Um, my body, I had no privacy door for my um, for my room. I gave eight gals of blood a week. If I didn't do any of my meetings and work from ten, um, eight to six at night, which is 10 hours a day, seven days a week, no days off, I wouldn't be able to see my kids or my boyfriend. I never had a say in my schedule. They always told me I had to do this. And ma'am, I will tell you, sitting in a chair 10 hours a day, seven days a week, it ain't fun. And especially when you can't walk out the front door. And that's why I'm telling you this again two years later. After I've lied and told the whole world I'm okay and I'm happy, it's a lie. I thought I just maybe I said that enough. Maybe I might become happy because I've been in denial. I've been in shock. I am traumatized. You know, fake it till you make it. But now I'm telling you the truth, okay? I'm not happy. I can't sleep. I'm so angry, it's insane, and I'm depressed. I cry every day, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't think how the state of California can have all this written in the court documents from the time I showed up and do absolutely nothing, just hire with my money another person to keep and keep my dad on board. Well, this whole IUD thing is very concerning to me because she's 39 years old. Women have limited fertility. At 30 and at 35 and older, we cons we're considered to be advanced maternal age. And so basically they're robbing her of her fertility. This is in effect court ordered sterilization, right? And it, again, I don't see how the conservatorship laws even call for that. I don't see that anywhere in the conservatorship statute. I just read through the statute with you. So it really concerns me that Brittany is in a position where she can say, you know, this is not what I want to do with my life. I'm able to provide you with all of these things, but this is the thing that I want to do with my life. That seems to me that even if you don't agree with her decisions, she has the right to make those decisions because there are plenty of people out there every day who makes decision who make decisions that we don't necessarily agree with. Think of family members and loved ones, and they're allowed to make those decisions and make those mistakes. And nobody has the right to take away their basic human rights from them. She says that no one's been telling her that she can, you know, undo the uh, conservatorship. It was her attorney's job to tell her that. It was her attorney's job to tell her, not only can we amend the conservatorship, we should end it or we can end it. You seem really unhappy with it. These are the things that you're expressing to me. This is of a concern to me. But he seems to have been encaptured in this golden goose, right? She's the goose that lays the golden eggs as long as you keep her full of medication and you keep her on tour and you keep her doing performances and her image can be used over and over again. It will keep paying you as long as you be if you're the attorney for her as it regards to this conservatorship. Once she can make her own decisions, that cash flow cuts off. And so I think what's happened here is that there is a, a conflict of interest. It's a major conflict of interest to me personally that the conservator of her estate and her person, Jamie Spears, because he's gone waxed and waned from being person, estate, person, estate, but it seems like he's had a lot of control over her finances, whether he's the conservator of her person or her estate. It really concerns me that Jamie Spears while he's been her conservator for this past 11 years, has taken a percentage of the profits from her concert sales. I don't know if he has anything to do with the record sales and from the residency sales. That really, really bothers me because I think that's a conflict of interest because you're not going to do things, in, in my opinion, you won't do things that are in her best interest for her mental health or for her personally or for her ha for her to be happy. Instead, you will do things to make sure that she turns out the same products over and over and over again, right? You're gonna make sure that she signs up for those residencies, she does those tours, she puts out those albums, she does these appearances, she does these guest spots on shows so that you can get a percentage of the proceeds. Then how is it 
that you are looking out for her best interest if you're interested in her continuing to be productive? What if she just wants to retire? What if she doesn't want to produce music anymore? What if she does just want to have kids? I think one of the reasons that they're forcing this IUD thing on her is because when she's pregnant, she's not really touring. She can't do a Vegas residency, right? And that really, really concerns me. I don't think anyone that has that level of financial interest in someone should also be point, appointed as a conservator. On the other hand, I do believe that Britney has some mental health issues and it, look like, it looks like there's strong evidence for her having mental health issues. But there are people, millions of people across this country with addictions issues and mental health issues who have control over their personal lives and their finances. They do not need to have a formal conservatorship in place in order to make sure that Britney remains okay. Her village can support her. Um, Kevin Federline recently came out with a statement basically saying that you know he uh, supports her and wanting to end the conservatorship and they haven't had the best of relationship. But even he, I don't think he likes Jamie, you know, but even he's like, I believe Britney when she says that she needs more freedom. Britney said she needed more freedom back in 2008. She said it back in 2014. She said it in 2018. And she's saying it again now in 2021. It is time for people to take her seriously. And finally, I don't think that it's right that the judge falls back on the fact that no one has filed a motion to end the conservatorship. I understand that the evaluations that have been done on Britney have found that the conservatorship is still appropriate because of the need to maintain Britney's finances and basically the status quo and to keep things from sliding back to how they were. But there were certain reports that were done with Britney and an independent um, assessor in which it, was, it raised some serious concerns that Britney was t being taken advantage of. And I think the court ha can, sua sponte, on its own motion, look into a further inquiry of whether or not it's a good idea to change who the conservator is or to end the conservatorship altogether. I think it's time for the conservatorship to end. I think that if these people love her like they say that they do, they can continue to provide her with support. And even though I don't agree with Britney stopping her mental health treatment or stopping therapy, I, I don't agree with that. I don't, she said something about like, she doesn't want to go to therapy. She wants to go to church. That's what she believes in. That's a person's right in this country. If you want to take it from me as an atheist, I have the right to not believe in what she believes in. She has a right to believe in what she wants to believe in. She has a right to that. And that's the way that the laws are written in this country. There's nothing in the, that law that says that they have a duty to make sure she maintains her pop star status. Like if she wanted to never be a pop star again, that should be her right. So those are my thoughts on the situation. That's my analysis on the conservatorship. I think it's abusive at this point. It's way past time that it be over. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and I'll talk to you later. Bye.